Hi everybody, Grandad here again. And what am I up to today? Well, today I'm going to do a video which is uh, featuring lots of creepy crawlies. Now, I hope you'll find this interesting. Now, some time ago, well, it was probably two, or five or six years ago, I think it was now, that, um, or even longer than that, uh, that I actually uh, collected um, a whole uh, batch of um, creepy crawlies, bugs and, and tarantulas and different things like that, and uh, spiders and, and butterfly and uh, moths and stuff like that. And it came as a, a, a package. You had a magazine come each month and um, the actual creatures came uh, two with every magazine. Now, uh, they're quite good. And uh, what I've done, I've, I've laid them all out on the bed here. And there's very, well over 70 of them. Now, I don't know how long this video is going to take. I'm going to show you each one briefly uh, and give you a closer look at some, other, some of them. Because what I want to do, unfortunately, this particular uh, series of, of things, the magazine didn't always correspond with the actual specimens you got. I mean, on the front cover of the magazine, you had a picture showing the specimens. But when you read the magazine, it wasn't necessarily about that particular creature. And another thing where each one is got a, a label to tell you what it is on the front. I don't know whether you can see those labels, but you might be able to see on that one. There's a there's a label all across the bottom which tells you what the creature is. Now, that's very useful because uh, what's happened, I've lost the magazines. I mean, I may still have them, but because we moved about 10 years ago into this bungalow, uh, where we live now in Oswestry. I used to live at uh, Monfort Bridge, which is just outside Shrewsbury. And uh, I've somehow, during the move, I may well have got rid of the magazines because they're, uh, the folders, I think, you had to pay extra for the folders and I may not have bought the folders, so I kept the magazines just loose, uh, which meant the magazines have got lost. I don't quite know what's happened to them. Um, so... What has happened, and uh, the actual names, these labels which I'm talking about, they didn't come with the, with, with the specimens each time. They sent them periodically as you went through the uh, series of magazines, and you got a whole, whole sheet covered with the names. So, and I was a bit lazy and didn't uh, do it very quickly, and I, I, I didn't always uh, look at the, big, the, the creatures and find out which one was which and stick the label on. Now, I did do it on a lot of them, but because I have sort of mislaid the magazines, I've still got somewhere the actual labels or some labels, but I don't know which creature because I haven't got the magazine to look at uh, to see which creature it is. And they, they all look very similar. A bug is a bug as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm not a great expert on bugs and I don't pretend to be an expert on anything, as I've told you before. Now, while I go through this uh, series of bugs, the ones that haven't got any uh, names on, I can't tell you what they are. Now, you may recognise them. I mean, they brought out this series, as I say, 10 or 12 years ago, and then they've redone it just recently. Now, maybe you're a person who actually collected these particular bugs yourself, and maybe uh, when they did the second edition, they did it better. So you may have a set of these bugs, and you'll be able to identify which ones they are. Now, I don't know how many there's going to be. I've left... I've got labels here up to about 29, so there may be 30 of them that haven't got labels on. And I'm going to show you those. And what I'm going to do is label each one with a number. Now, if you happen to live in the country where this particular bug lives, or if you know something about bugs, you may be able to identify it, or you may have the collection and again be able to identify it. What I'll do, I'll show you the bug and tell you what, what bit I know about it or think I know about it. And if you recognize it, or it can give me any more information about these bugs. The local name, the strange name that people give to bugs, which is not necessarily the name that's on here, or the scientific name. If you recognise any of those and you say, oh, the, the, that shorthorn grasshopper you showed me, which is what this one is, and it goes worldwide. Now, this shorthorn gross, grasshopper might be, have a different name locally. You may call it a jack, jack rabbit or whatever, I don't know. You may call it something or a, like a ladybird or a lady cow, like we call ladybirds. Um... And I'd be interested in that. So if you know any information about these bugs, as I show you, or especially the name, because once you've got the name, you can go onto the Internet and find out about that bug. And that might be very useful to me. So I'm hoping you can help me with this. But if you can't, don't worry. Just enjoy the bugs and I'll show them to you as we go on. Now, this one, the first one I'll start off with, because I'm rambling again, as usual, as I say, is called a shorthorn grasshopper. 
and they're found worldwide. Now each one is set in this plastic uh, resin, but they're very beautiful uh, little creatures. And it's a, it's a pity that they probably kill these creatures to put them in here. But well, insects don't last very long anyway. Their lifespan is not very long. They soon uh, get eaten by something, either bats or birds or other insects eat them. And so they don't last very long. So that one, and what I've done, I've tried to categorize them into what I think are the same sort of bugs. Uh, now, so this is a grasshopper. And you see he's quite small, but the next one I'm going to show you is much bigger. Now look at the size of those two those two grasshoppers. Now this is obviously some kind of grasshopper. It looks very similar in shape, but this one hasn't got a name. So if you recognize this grasshopper, and as I say, it's quite, quite large. It's a lot bigger than a normal sized grasshopper or whatever you call it. So I don't know what part of the world this grasshopper, or it may not even be a grasshopper, it might be a locust. I mean, I've no idea. I mean, it might be a locust, but it hasn't got a name. So what I'm going to do, I've got my little tape here, and I'm going to cut off number one, and I'm going to stick it on the end of this grasshopper, or locust, or whatever it is. So if you recognize that, grasshoppery type creature, but it's quite big, if you know what that is, Put a little note in the comments to tell me what that is. Now there's another one here, and he's a he's a sort of cross between the two. He's he's halfway between the two. He's a bit smaller than that one, but uh, bigger than that one. Now he's got uh, the same sort of situation. He's got wings, and uh, as I say, there's no name on this because I've no idea what sort of grasshopper that is. Now, if you recognize it, I'm holding it in the wrong place. I'm sorry about that. I didn't look at the camera very good. But if you recognize that grasshopper as to what species it is or what name it is, just let me know. Now, I'll put a number two on that. Now, the idea is, if you know what that is, you just uh, put a comment saying, oh, number two is a, a such and such bug, known locally as a something else kind of creature. So those are the grasshoppers. And if you recognize them, Please let me know. So that's the first lot. Now I've got two more here. Now these fortunately have got names. And this was is uh, a Jerusalem cricket. And it comes from the Americas. Now this is a huge creature. I mean I wouldn't want one of these flying into my window at night. And buzzing around the room. But that's a huge thing. I, I can't tell whether it has got wings. It may not even have wings. I can't really tell by looking at it whether it's got wings. Now, some of these uh, creatures, when you look at them, and I can see it shining in the uh, in the camera there, they look as if they're silver. And if you look underneath this one, you can see the bottom of it looks very silvery. Now, I don't think that's actually on the beetle or on the bug. I think that's as a result of air being trapped between the, the resin and the actual creature, because a lot of these creatures have got that feature which I don't think has got anything to do with the actual colours of the beetles. Now that's a huge beetle and he's got a long, and whether he stings or not, I don't know. But that's uh, the Jerusalem beetle. Now this one is uh, an Asiatic cricket. So some are called crickets. And this one comes from Southern Asia, uh, it looks like. And it's rather interesting because... Oh, it's a feeler. I was going to say this. It looks like a hair inside there, but it looks like one of his feelers. He's got some rather lovely feelers on him and uh, the one's longer than the other so the one feeler is broken but that's rather nice but it's quite small uh, but I've got the name of that one so I know where that gun came from now on we go I've got two more here and this first one is a praying mantis from Iran so this is a praying mantis and they're rather interesting I love praying mantises they're rather interesting creatures because they uh, stand on their legs and they wobble back and to as they as they stand there. I don't know why they wobble, but maybe that's you'd think that would be attracting attention to themselves. But maybe they uh, and he's got two long arms sticking out the front there that you can see. And uh, so that would be for catching other insects. So he's an insect eater. He eats some of the smaller bugs that I've got. And that's quite interesting. That's the uh, the praying mantis. Now, this one, I put it together with this one because this is the only one of these I've got. And this is a stick insect. Now, I know it's a stick insect by looking at it. And it's got a little bit of stick by the side of it just to compare it with a stick. So I know what it is, but I don't know exactly which country it comes from 
or which uh, variety of stick insect. I mean, it may be a British one. I don't know whether we have them in Britain. It may be from overseas. But if you recognize that stick insect, just let me know what it is. And we'll call that one number three. I'm just sticking a number on the end there. So that if I do manage to get any replies, um, then I can identify which uh, thing it is. So that's the stick insect. Now the next two, the one's got a label, the other hasn't. This one is a larvae and it's a dragonfly larva and it comes from the Americas. Now these, I think they live in water. So they're a water dwelling uh, little bug. And they're very interesting little things. Um, very interesting looking bug, but that's got a name on it fortunately. Now this one, I say it's sort of a millipede or centipede because it's got so many legs. I mean, it's got absolutely loads of legs. Now, I don't know what this one is. It hasn't got a label. I wasn't able to find out what it is. So again, if you recognize this uh, particular bug and you can tell me what it is on my list here, it's going to be number four. So I'll stick that on the front there. Now, as I say, I've got over 70 of these uh, things, so I may do this video for about 20 minutes. And then, because uh, people can, uh, watching these videos, they can get a bit bored maybe watching these videos, or they may have not have enough time to, uh, to spend watching videos. So if this goes on for about 20 minutes and I haven't got through, I may split it and do uh, two videos. Two separate videos now i don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing but uh, from my point of view i know that if you have a video that goes on more than 20 minutes a bit a bit of a bind now this one is a sort of a fly and again it hasn't got a name on it but it's a beautiful fly or whatever kind of thing it is or moth it may be a moth now it's got a red body and four dark black colored wings but it's very interesting and a lovely little uh, butterfly or whatever it is and I'm going to call him or her number five. And as I say, I'd appreciate it if you can tell me what the name of that is. Now, most of these, I think, oh dear, some of these haven't got names on. Now, this one is actually a wasp. Um, and I've got these wasps and ants I put together. And this one comes from Indonesia. And it's a, a paper wasp. And again, it's a very interesting uh, little creature. But it's quite big for a wasp. Now, whether they sting or not, I mean, wasps are notorious stingers. So whether these things buzz around and sting people, I don't know. But that's the wasp. Now, then, this one is a, a giant forest ant. Now, ants, I know, can be quite vicious. They can bite you. And uh, if you've got, a, I mean, ants nests, so there's hundreds and thousands of, of ants. So if you had, I mean, this is quite big for an ant. I mean, compared with the ants that we get in England, this is an absolute monster. And it's a really great big one. So the, the giant forest ant from uh, Southern Asia is really must be a real problem for people living in Asia when they've got ants that big galloping around. Now, this one, I don't know. Again, it hasn't got a name on this one, but this is a rather large, very big winged uh, flying creature. Now, this might be what they call a cycad. I'm not sure. I think they call them cycads and uh, they only come out... Uh, Every so many years, I think they stay underground for a tremendous amount of time, if that's what it is, a cycad. But I don't recognize it. But again, as I say, that silvery tinge that's on there may not be uh, sort of genuine for the bug. Now, this one I'm going to be calling number six. Uh, because there's no lame on it. I don't know what it is. So that's number six. Oh, I better put a line under that to show it's number six and not number nine. I've just realized nine and a six can look uh, very similar. So that's number six. Now this one is another one with wings and it's rather pretty. It's got red wings on the bottom, red colored wings on the bottom of it. And the ends of the tips of the wings, I've got a black, they're dotted, they've got spots on, little spots on the wings and the ends are black. It's got long back legs and it's very pretty. But I've no idea what it is, unfortunately. And we're going to call that one number eight. So that's got number eight. No, number seven, sorry. I must correct that. That one is number seven, not number eight. That's our number seven. 
the little red one with the flying wings. Now this one, again, it hasn't got a name, but it looks very fierce. I mean, this is a really fierce looking bug. I mean, it might be some kind of wasp. It does look as if it's got a sting on there. When you look at, look at the bottom of it, its tail seems to have what looks like a sting. And it's got a rather interesting face. On the front there, it's got a yellow head and great big eyes. Or what look like big eyes. They may not be really big eyes, but they look like eye, big eyes. And so that's a really fierce looking creature. And this one is number eight. I'll stick a little number eight on the end there, because again, I haven't got a number on him. But he's a very interesting little bug, and I'd love to know what he is. Now this one is another beetle that looks a little bit like the first one I showed you, which I thought may be a cycad, because it looks a bit like a cycad. But this is a smaller version of that first one. And again, it's very pretty. It's got spotty, spotty wings, little spots on the wings of it. And uh, again, it's got that silvery sheen, but that's nothing to do with it, I don't think. I think that's air trapped underneath the uh, the body of this creature when they put it into this resin. So if you recognize that, just drop me a line and tell me what it is. And that one, that one is number nine. And I'll just put a line under that number nine because I don't want it getting mixed up with number six. So there we are, that's that one. Now I get some more. Now these are, uh, This next little batch, I'll put these away now because I'm getting my table cluttered up. Put those over there. These are, uh, this one, an e Eastern Lanternfly from Indonesia. Eastern Lanternfly. Now this is a very pretty one. This has got beautiful wings. And they're sort of pink, orangey colour, and yellow at the ends. And a lovely, lovely looking beetle that is. Lovely looking fly. And of course I can look up what that is by uh, going into Eastern Lanternfly. And I can find out off the internet exactly all about that one. Now this one is a dragonfly. And this is found worldwide. So uh, maybe we find these in England. This is a dragonfly. And as usual the dragonfly has got four wings. But they're folded down so you can't quite see them. And uh, so there we got the uh, the worldwide dragonfly there. Now this one is a, pod, a pollen basket bee, from, and this is worldwide. Now I've never seen one of these in England. Pollen basket bee, I can't believe those live in England, but maybe they do. And I've never seen one, they're huge. I mean, that's a big bee. If it comes flying into your room at night, buzzing around. Now I, I, I might have to look that one up because it looks very interesting. But that's a pollen bas basket bee. And the last one in this little series, another drop wing uh, dragonfly. And this comes from Africa and Asia. Africa and Asia. And that's another kind of dragonfly with four wings. And they always look very fierce at the, at the end, the mouth. The head end is always very fierce. And it's a lovely uh, little creature. But uh, obviously we don't have them in England. Now this last one. Now this is a very delicate looking thing. Now this is very difficult to see because even in this glass you can hardly see it. It's, it's so delicate. It's got four wings. So maybe that makes it some kind of dragonfly. Now the wings may not show up very good on camera. But it's got four wings and on each of the front wings there's two funny little spots on the wings. I don't know how well that's going to show up on the camera. And then it's got very long legs at the front and a little head there. But that's a very beautiful one. And again, it hasn't got a name, unfortunately. So we're going to be calling that one number 10. And I hope you can uh, identify that and tell me what it is. Now these next ones. Oh, there's another. I'll do that one first. And then I'll bring on these. Because these uh, next ones. This one is another. Uh, oh, this is a cycad. This is a Thailand, and it's called a Thai Cycad. So that has actually got its name. That's a Thai Cycad. And it's a really black, very striking, uh, lovely wings on that one. Lovely wings and uh, petals on it. Look like, like leaf petals. Really beautiful. So that's a Thai Cycad. So maybe those ones that I were looking at before were Cycads, 
but that's very beautiful and I've got the name of it so that's good now these are can be a bit scary to some people some people uh, are scared of spiders now the next little uh, little batch of creatures I've got are uh, spiders now this one is a golden orb web spider from uh, Leos Leoso I think it's Leoso uh, golden orb web spider and it's L A O S I don't Los Lois I don't know what that means is but it's a, a rather lovely spider now if people are frightened of spiders they may not like this very much but that's a rather I mean we've got spiders probably that big in England the house spider and some of the garden spiders we have are very beautiful and they're uh, all over the place so that's that one and I've got the name of it and this one here this one is called a nursery web spider and this is found worldwide now again I've never seen one of these in England but it's uh, rather interesting and of course they've got eight legs of spiders and uh, a great many knees so there's a lot of knees on a spider I can't remember exactly each leg has four four knees so this one is really bent up he's <laughs> sort of a contortionist almost and uh, people don't like spiders because they move too quick and they jump which is rather <laughs> disconcerting when you sit in a in the, in the living room and a spider goes across and tears across really fast or jumps and uh, it can be quite scary so those are two spiders now these two spiders haven't got names so these are a bit difficult to identify now this one is rather interesting again it's quite a big spider and I've no idea where it comes from but what it looks like its body at the back oh I'm holding it the wrong place the camera's this end I always make a mistake with that and uh, perhaps I'll move it over a little bit because I'm always putting them in not in the camera properly so this spider is rather interesting he's got that gold sheen on some of his legs but he looks as if he's got a paper bag on his back I don't whether that's an egg case I'm not sure or whether it's just some peculiarity when this creature died it's uh, its body turned into like a, a, a paper bag and it looks really white now I don't know what that one is and if you recognize it where it's from and what it is I'm putting number 11 on that one so if you recognize that spider let me know what it is now I've got another one here which is very similar and it's very difficult I'm sure on camera to recognize which these spiders are so if you can identify them it's going to be a real uh, a real expert to to recognize what these spiders are but now as I say they've redone this uh, series of uh, of creatures and so you may be able to uh, identify just from these numbers uh, just by looking I mean what or from your, the book that you've actually got which one of these spiders it is now that one is number 12 so I'll put number 12 on the end of that one and if you can identify what spider that is I'd really appreciate it now this one I didn't come with this particular series I actually bought this one in a shop and it was so beautiful and it cost me 15 pounds so some of these things can be quite expensive and I've seen more in different shops but because I don't know which ones I've got and which ones I haven't got I never know which ones to buy now when I bought this one I knew I hadn't got it I knew definitely I hadn't got this one but this is a huge spider and very beautiful it's hairy and this is a tarantula and uh, people who are into spiders would love this one and I think it's really good and it's a very good specimen which is why I paid 20 pounds for it it was very worthwhile I think and it's a very beautiful spider and uh, I really like that one but it didn't come with these uh, ones that I've actually got but that's a very beautiful spider and again it's a bit scary so I'm going from there to the biggest from the biggest spider I've got to the smallest now this one oh, this one it actually came in a box and it's a tiny little spider I'll bring it in as close as I can to the camera so you can see what it looks like but it's sort of got uh, it's got six sort of spikes sticking out from its back it's got the usual eight legs but it's a beautiful little spider and unfortunately the box it came in I've got here and it cost me four pounds it doesn't say anything it just says spiny spider and a number so it doesn't tell me what kind of a spider this is I mean spiny spider could mean anything there's lots of spiny spiders about I'm sure now in England we've got what we call a money spider and it's tiny and very often you're walking about and they blow about in the wind and uh, 
you'll pick up a money spider crawling on you. Now, they say in England that if your money spider crawls on you, it's good luck and you shouldn't knock it off. You should just let it be and leave it alone because uh, money spiders mean that there's money coming to you. <laughs> now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it's very interesting and uh, it's a local name. Now, if you know local names for some of these creatures, I'll be very interested because I like to find out exactly uh, as much as I can about these creatures. Now, I'll call this money, this little, what I call a little spiky spider. Uh, I'll call him number 13. And uh, if you can identify what that spider is, his actual name, I'll really appreciate it. Now, this video has already gone on for 25 minutes. And I'm sure people don't want to watch videos for, for too long before having to break off. So what I'll do, I'm barely halfway through these uh, uh, creatures. So what I'll do, I'll end this particular part of the, of the filming and uh, I'll call this uh, episode one of my bug videos. So what I'll do, I, I hope people don't mind. I, I'm doing this because I think people don't want to look, go on too long. So what I'll do, I'll break off and I'll be back with you with part two of this video in just a few minutes. Okay now, bye bye.